Good evening, welcome to this installment of the Evening Review Show. My name is Jemima Beatrice, your host this evening. Now we are speaking to Dean Nav, rapper turned gospel artist about the recently organized uh, Speak Out, Seek Help music festival that he organized in, um, with the aim to raise awareness about the troubles facing artists. Thank you for joining us, Dinav. Thank you very much for having me. Now, Dinav, can you just give us um, the backstory to this uh, musical festival? Mm -hmm. Why did you feel um, the need to organize such an event? Uh, thank you very much for that question. Uh, it was inspired by a need that arose during the pandemic, uh, 2019 to 2020 there, when we were approached by so many artists uh, seeking for counseling, seeking for uh, uh, somebody just to speak to them. And I believe they came to us because of the type of music we are doing, which is gospel. And they trusted that we could at least have a word or two with them. And uh, we did what we could do. When we saw now that the artists were becoming more, we thought we needed to bring in people that were trained to do the job. We we're talking about our psychologists, uh, social workers. And then that's how we were able to approach the office of the First Lady. They gave us uh, social workers and a commitment to from a break free from violence, and they became partners also with us. Then we also got uh, Lifeline, Child Line Namibia. We have people from Halek, uh, psychologist. And then uh, um, uh, there's another group called um, Purposeful Living. Mm -hmm. They also decided to partner with us and be able to render their services to speak to these artists because we could only do uh, as much we, what we knew and we were limited. Yeah. Now, um, you've just mentioned that uh, yeah. you've received, especially during the pandemic, you've yeah. received a lot of calls, um, people reaching out to you, seeking help. Yeah. Uh, we've also seen um, a, n a, yeah, a number of artists have taken their own lives yeah. Yeah. and um, we found out in ha afterwards that they were battling depression. Yeah. Can you give us an insight into yeah. the lives of these artists and what kind so the people that reached out to you, what were the issues that they were battling with? Yeah, most of the people that uh, reached out to us were, they were mostly de uh, depressed. They had mental issues and they were going into anxieties. And it was a contributing factor from the fact that most of these artists make their life or their money from shows. And when the music industry was locked down due to the pandemic around the world, shows stopped, events stopped, there was no income. And uh, when you cannot provide and the abuse are coming, uh, you go into depression. You are thinking about where to sleep, where to eat, and school fees for the children. And also, um, what, what the public doesn't know is that a lot of these guys really don't, uh, uh, even though they want to reach out, they have a, a, a kind of like a, pr a pride to be able to go into public institutions where they can be seen by their fans, by people they because they themselves are almost like counselors to the fence. Now here you are in public being counseled and they, they retreat into their silence and some of them just, when they cannot do it anymore or they cannot cope anymore, they will just take their own lives as we have seen with others. So how would you say is um, substance abuse like alcohol and drugs contributing to the challenges that artists are facing? Um, in most cases it's not really the substance even though when you hear that somebody has killed himself, you, the first thing that will come to the public or what you see on social media is people accusing the person of either using drugs or, or abusing the substance. But normally a person wouldn't want to kill themselves because they, they, they abuse the substance. The substance is being abused because there is a situation in a person's life. I remember we spoke to somebody who he, he, the reason why he was abusing substance, he was trying to find a way to relax, a way to sleep. He couldn't sleep because of the problem that was at hand, and the problem wasn't the substance. The substance was, the, was brought in his life to kind of make that problem go away, which doesn't go away. So yeah. how many artists, I mean not how many, obviously you don't have mm. a figure, but mm. how serious is this um, issue of artists using substance to basically um, numb the issues that they are dealing with? Uh, it's, most, it's, it's actually, if you are giving a, a figure from 100%, maybe maybe 40, 50. Okay. Uh, I was one of them before. Uh, and, but mine was uh, in a situation where I, 
I was left by somebody I thought I loved. Mm -hmm. And then I just went into substance abuse and I wasn't to forget my problem. I wanted just not to remember. But it does help temporarily. You are, you are in the bar, you're drinking with your friends or you're smoking or you're doing what you're doing. You kind of feel this temporal hype feeling where you are into talking and laughing and joy and celebrating whether a match or a soccer match or a boxing match. The moment it's gone or it's out of your body, here comes the, the problem back again in your face. And then you want to continue the next day. For you not to remember, you, type, you kind of repeat the whole circle. It does not go away. It does only, it helps a little bit for those many moments, but the only thing that will really help is more like going into rehab, speaking to a professional a counselor, a psychologist. They will give you, they will put you into a program. You follow that program the way they design it for you. You will actually become a better person. Yeah. Wow, that's quite a vicious uh, yeah. cycle. Um, so you've said you've experienced this yourself, yeah. but also as a former gangster, yeah. I can only imagine that you've been le left with uh, scars. So yeah. how did you deal with these issues yourself? I, for me, I think what helped me was the faith, because uh, I remember when I came from the street, I, what brought me out of the street was actually the gospel. I wasn't really, I just, I didn't decide, okay, I, don't, I want to stop this gangster lifestyle. I was just minding my own business and there was a group at school that used to bother us a lot. I think they called themselves the Scripture Union or something. And every time they were on my case, they were on my case. But I was enjoying my life because I had the money, the women, everything was there. It was how they were speaking to me and the message that they keep on speaking every day and every day. It kind of like built up faith in me and I believed. And when I left, I detached myself from the crime and the gangs. I actually uh, found it a bit helpful because I was surrounded now by people who were loving, who were always talking, and, uh, and ever since I've been with them since till today. The street has been calling, always. There are moments when you are, like in the music industry, when you, when you are broke, and you think about how easy you used to make the money, and then you hear those voices now, street is calling you, and you look at your friends that, if I go to this guy now, he can just cook me up with something quickly. But then you have made a commitment, you know, and there are people on your shoulder that are looking up to you to also become better. So now, apart from looking at God and being afraid of committing a sin or crime before him, you are also afraid of disappointing the many people that are on your shoulders. Because now you have spoken to so many schools around the country. I went, I went from the north to the south, university to university, sharing my story, encouraging people and motivating because I'm a motivational speaker. And now many people have believed. You don't want to disappoint those people. So when you are going through something, you just either have to fight it or find somebody to speak to. Sure, that's, yeah. quite, that's quite a thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, you, earlier, uh, just before this, you, you mm. said that the good thing is that you are basically put into re a rehabilitation um, program or something mm. like that. Mm. But not everybody, uh, some artists, uh, most artists in Namibia, mm. earn very little from the performances that yeah. they make. Yeah. So can you just run me through this SOSH? Mm program. So um, apart from the pro bono, uh, pro bono um, uh, psychological uh, meetings that they will have, mm -hmm. sessions that they will have, how else how, um, will this program help artists? Mm. Yeah, what we have done for with some of the artists, uh, I remember there is an artist, I wouldn't want to mention his name because I don't have his per permission yet. We, we even have to pay the album from Dinaf Entertainment ourselves. And that's when we brought in sponsors. We, during Source, there were sponsors that People who would sponsor the venue, the sound, those are guys from outside, outside Dinaf Entertainment. We say that should they be, when they sponsor, they will continue sponsoring even throughout the year. Because we are going to move from school to prison to, we just want to do like an outreach. And some of the funds that will be coming in, we want to help to pay for some of the, of the, of the issues that our people are going through. Like this person is struggling to release an album. Because once they release an album, he must be able now to sell that album without our help and be able to generate money for himself, like we have done for the person I, I said I couldn't mention the name. Okay. And he's doing very well now because he was very concerned about his son. He has a young boy, a young, a young son, and he didn't have money to provide. So it's okay. Go to the studio, talk to the producer, and let the producer give you the invoice and bring it to us. We're able to cover it. Now he's out there marketing it and selling it. He's doing real well. Well, that's a great yeah. story. Mm. That's an absolutely great story. So mm. I attended the inaugural festival. Mm. Um, so number one, can you just tell us, um, because it's, I understand it will mm. be more than once. Yeah, it's every year. So it will mm. be an annual one. Yeah. 
Okay. So then, I, um, so what was quite disturbing to me, well, not disturbing, I was just wondering, mm. um, during the, the, the program, mm. I've observed that some of the artists were outside, hanging outside, uh, yeah. um, instead of sitting inside, yeah. they listen to the motivational yeah. uh, speakers and yeah. people that um, spoke to them. Yeah, I have noticed that. Uh, what do you make of that? And uh, does it mean um, it's a waste of time? Uh, we were actually disappointed in the fact that, because the event wasn't for the public, yes. it was for the artist. Uh, they were supposed to s sit inside and listen to the messages. But you know, they liked that treatment where they are backstage and you know, VIP treatment because there was food and drinks at the back there. And they're talking among each other, you know, they've missed each other for many years and they're now catching up. And everybody's also there, you know, proving a point from their own record label. But uh, we we saw that and uh, because after the event, there were actually some artists that called us and say, I need to talk to some psychologists now. And we were able to connect them to, to the lifeline. They are busy talking to some of the artists. And, uh, but especially the person that we connected to Lifeline after the event, he was actually inside the event. He was one of the guys that broke down during his performance. And he, he almost uh, uh, actually cried while he was performing. I don't, know whether, I don't know whether you saw me going up on stage and I was just talking to the guy and say, this too shall pass. He, after the event, needed a contact person. He was the first one that came actually and said, I need somebody to talk to now. I'm really going through something now, now. And then we're able to connect him to Lifeline and they are busy setting up a program. How they are doing it, we don't need to know. Yes, of course. It's between them and the artist. But the rest, definitely, they, some of them are taking it like it's just an event. It's just a show. I'm here to do my new song. They don't know that it's for them. We know that people are battling issues in life. And we have gone out of our way to speak to people, to render services that they could have paid for. And uh, hopefully, uh, they will reach out. Yeah. Very small steps at yeah. the end of the day. Small mm. steps uh, get to bigger <laughs> journeys. Mm. So um, the other thing you also mentioned uh, at the at the show was that mm. you've reached out to local corporate uh, community, yeah. and um, disappointingly you haven't mm. received any favorable uh, yeah. response. Mm. And the event, like you've just said yourself, mm. was organized and supported from people from outside. Yeah. Can you just talk to me about that? Yeah, what we did is that uh, you know. Well, every artist does, the, does, the, does this. What we do is that we send out always, uh, uh, what is this, uh, re, um, prepositions, for example, what you are planning to do mm -hmm. per year or in, in the next month, um, ideas, you write letters. We wrote to almost uh, 50 companies. Most of them replied. Major companies in Namibia, they all replied. But they're all saying, Ah, but we are directing our funds elsewhere, or our funds are already directed elsewhere. All the best with your events. Then there is an uh, online station called uh, Clubhouse. They are based in the United States. Mm -hmm. So they called and said they want to have an interview with me just the way you are having now. And we are talking about the event. I thought it was just maybe some young person who came up with their own type of online issues, only to find out there were doctors on that, on that, on that page. Well, awesome. There were people from China, a lot of uh, people, and then while we were talking, people started pledging. Uh, that's why most of, the, most of the tickets were bought, but they were bought from outside. So we just have to give them out to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, 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 then there were some people from China. They said, okay, how much is the venue? We said, no, 15, 25,000, the sound. Three people from China took care of that. And they were able to, 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 to pay for the sound, they paid for the, the venue, mm -hmm. uh, and then a few things also. People just came on board, but it was from that interview, the online one, that brought in from people from outside. Uh, people from, out, from Namibia, we were just thinking, this is our own people, we are dealing with our own issues. Those guys don't have to care about what you go through here. If you, if you die, you die, what do they care? They are up there in the Great Wall of China, minding their own businesses. But for them to be able to, you know, for somebody to give you 25,000 and they don't know you, that's, a, that's a really hard. That is really uh, hard. And it was touching and I was just feeling, um, maybe one day they will understand locally here. Because uh, it's a kind of a culture when you are beginning something, people are a bit, uh, not really out there, but as soon as you become big, then they come on board. Suddenly they come on board. Yeah. We'll be back after a break and then we talk a little more about this. See you there.
take a load off and tune into another episode of Brave Namibia as we take a look at both ordinary and extraordinary Namibians. Brave Namibia is broadcasted on NTV Saturdays at 6.30 p.m. and oneup2.com as well as broadcasted on the following Facebook platforms on Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Republican, Algamina Titan, Namibian Sun and all Namibia Media Holdings pages. For more information, contact the Brave team at brave at synergy.com.na Brave Namibia for the ordinary and extraordinary Namibians. So welcome back. Um, so uh, we are speaking to Dean Nav, um, rapper and gospel artist who has recently organized the first ever Seek Speak Out, Seek Help music festival which aims to raise awareness around mental health issues that local artists are battling with. Now, um, as we spoke earlier about how you are helping artists, at the end of the day, artists are not just them themselves. They have families, they have f friends. Yeah. So what advice do you have for families when it comes to helping their loved ones while going through these issues? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, you see, when I first came to, to the faith, I had a kind of uh, type of mentality towards the people outside the faith. I looked at them as different people who are who are who belong to a different type of lifestyle or we are going this direction and they are going that direction we have no business with them and then i was give, i was given a shock of my life when later i kind of like came to realize a realization when i said to myself but we do have fa people in our families who also don't believe we have people in our in our community who are our friends but they don't believe. Immediately my attitude changed towards that type of behavior. And then I've seen it happening again in the community when it comes to mental health. You will find out that parents will, find, uh, will, will discover that their son or daughter is living some type of lifestyle. Either on drugs or substance or just living some type of lifestyle they don't agree with. In immediately what they would start doing is they will start doing what culture suggests they should do. That is against our culture, that's against our, our people, our tradition don't allow that. Instead of first remembering that this person is first your child, before you can bring in any culture into this person's life, he's first your child and then a, a member of a community. And he deserves or she deserves all the love that she can have from you as a parent. Mm -hmm. If you don't dispose or, uh, trans or, or give that type of love to this child, she's going to find it elsewhere. And the enemy is always very clever at taking over. Remember the story of uh, Eve, I don't want to be biblical now, but when the man was not there to talk to the wife, the snake stepped in. We need always to be there to talk to our people, to talk to our children. Are you going through this year? Is there a way I can help you? Because my son or my daughter can be on drugs, but she will always be my daughter. I will love her, I will give her the support. I might not agree with the drugs, definitely no parents will agree. But I, we need to, as parents, we must be able to be careful what comes out of our mouth first. Because you can send your child to the tree, by that I mean to hang themselves. Because they are, they are feeling like now they are rejected in the society, they are also rejected at home. You know, anybody have the ability to change and become better. I am a testimony to that. And people showed me love. When I came to the faith, everybody around the faith was just loving me. I used to wear earrings and I used to, I would be drinking for the first few months when I first came to the, the faith and nobody told me to stop. All they did is that they continued to tell me what to do. Now that you are this, this is what you should do. If you read a few scriptures per day, you become stronger, you become stronger. They never say stop drinking. They never stop, say remove your earrings. As I grew and I became an evangelist and a preacher, I thought, now I'm also in a public place. Let me be an example. And I changed. So if I can, anybody can. And all we need is just the love. It was the love of the people around me that changed my life. 
So you say yeah. you're an evangelist, you are um, a man of God yeah, now. I'm a preacher. When you talk about lifestyle, mm. one of the issues that also drive, one of the things that drive people into depression mm. is the fact that society and family are not willing to accept the fact that people have different sexualities, that they mm. are gay. Mm. What are your views on that? Because you're not saying anything explicit here. No, for me, if you ask me my view on sexuality, whether it's gay or lesbian, I've always had one answer which is the same. Even if you're asking me, what is your view on people who are straight? For me, it's choices. In life, we are presented before us choices to make. You, I'm, you, people will not expect me to, to bash or attack the gay community or the LGBTQ if I am not also attacking the straight community for what they are doing. Mm. The same choices that are before you, before the straight, is also before the LGBT community. I see a people that have made a choice in their life to live a, some, a, a, a type of lifestyle. The, way, the same way the straight guys decided to make a choice to be straight. At the end of the day now, as human beings, we, we cannot get involved in the judgment of one another. We leave that up to God. God is just calling us to love one another. He made it so plain in the scriptures. Love one another, then the people will know and believe that you are mine. Mm. We should remember the gays, the lesbians, the straight, we are all children of God. Okay. The only difference here is whether we will go to, to God and call him our father. Uh -huh. Now in conclusion, yeah. at the end of the day, you yeah. are an artist. Yeah. So what, what uh, projects are you working on? Are you uh, uh, launching an album soon? Oh yeah, uh, actually we were supposed to launch the albums on the same night. Uh -huh. We were just overwhelmed with uh, work. We, we, the guy, our manager is the one who actually do the designing of the CD covers. He was supposed to have finished that evening, actually before that, that night. But the materials were coming in because we had so many artists that needed to, their graphics needed to be done. So he couldn't finish. So we said, okay, let's, after the event, let's rest for a few weeks. And then at least towards the end of the month there, album, albums will be coming. That's where albums are three albums, Christmas, Lady Dinah, and Dinah. Albums are ready, covers are now being designed. The public should just look out for the coming, towards the end of the month, albums will be available in the market. And just check it out for our social media and the newspapers when they market or announce the arrival of these new albums. Well, congratulations yeah. on that. Thank you very well, much. Thank you uh, once again for joining yeah. us. I appreciate that. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time. The Evening Review is a daily interview-based talk show that dissects and expounds on current affairs as they occur in Namibia. The show aims at reaching Namibians of all age groups who seek better understanding of the state of current affairs in the country. This show is broadcasted on NTV, 1up2.com and cross-shared on the following Facebook platforms, Namibian Sun and Namibia Media Holdings. The Evening Review focuses on interviews, latest news and up-to-the-minute current events. Contact evening at synergy.com.na Evening Review Unpacking today's pertinent issues.